opportunity to introduce the creative genius behind the rise of the fallen. Any idea who's the author? All of you know that, right? Of course. <laughs> a man of many talents. While you may know him as a producer, actor, director, Abhishek Krishnan is not just that. Okay, now let's move to our esteemed chief guest for the day, the maestro of Indian cinema, Hansel Mehta sir. He needs no introduction, right? But he definitely deserves a standing ovation. Okay, now let's dive into the realm, the magical realm, the rise of the fallen. The biggest question is... I'm very, very flattered. I have never, uh, you know... Uh, I, I, I never would have imagined that I would be sitting with uh, you, sir, and Abhishek, you are a rising talent and I will show that, uh, you know, you will reach heights, as I told you, passing the baton of, uh, of uh, you know, mythical tales. So, uh, we'll be just talking a little bit about the book and basically about uh, writing and stories and, you know, myths in general. So, if you guys can, yeah, take the mic. Uh, this is a small interaction, you know, and followed by that, we have Q&A. So, if you guys you have any questions, definitely think about it prior and then you know we'll take I think probably three four questions by then so yeah so uh, Abhishek I'll start with you you know so what made you write your first book um, so I've been a storyteller in various capacities for the past decade I've been an actor I dabbled in writing directing producing did all of that for a while um, and I was very fascinated by the idea of creation building development and I like the idea of taking the initiative rather than always waiting for something to come to you. And then the pandemic hit and we all know how that was for all of us. It wasn't, it wasn't the best of times. You're just stuck at home, you're, you're consuming excessive content, there's only input, right? you're watching, you're, you're reading, but there was no vent, uh, you know, there was, no, there was no creative vent at all. And, uh, and that's when I just, I just had this bizarre idea of of, of this world that I wanted to create from all my inspiration. So I thought, you know what, why don't I just put them all together, uh, see where it goes and, uh, and, and, and yeah, and then, you know, it, it was, that, that was, that's what actually gave me some kind of purpose and drive through, through the, through COVID. I would wake up at five and sit there to write, gave me some kind of, some sense of passion. I remember even um, when I actually had COVID. I would uh, pop dolos and when you pop dolo, you know, you have this brief window when you feel like the fever has subsided and then I would quickly jump and write a few lines to feel a little fulfilled, ah, okay, I'll just do And then, you know, and then feel terrible again. But uh, I think that was a very exciting process, very fulfilling process and besides that, no one was giving me 300 crores to make a film out of it, so I thought, let's... Wonderful, wonderful. Hansel, sir, uh, what made you know, what is the first thing that you wrote or created and what drew you towards it, that particular subject? You know, a uh, couple of things. One, uh, I am a lazy writer. And so I usually uh, trouble writers <laughs> a lot. I make them uh, write for me. I've written uh, very early on in my career, I wrote uh, some short stories which I film. I, did, I write primarily to film. And uh, I wrote a film called Avatar, so that nobody was willing to write, uh, so I sort of had to write with a deadline. We had to, I had to submit the script in 2005, and uh, I had no choice but to write. And uh, the film got made in 2017, so 12 years after. How, how long did it take to write? Yeah, yeah. Two days. Because they wanted it in two days, and I lied to the producer saying the script is ready. So that was my, uh, so writing came more out of compulsion, uh, but otherwise I mean I always marvel that writing has a discipline. You know, I'm a reader, I'm a voracious reader and uh, I find writing uh, an amazing discipline to just sit down and write those pages and to churn out, you know. For me writing is about having that discipline of churning out an X number of pages day after day, day after day. I mean, I have. I must have at least uh, 15 incomplete scripts and books on my desktop which I carry around which uh, I 
sort of you know make as a retirement plan. You know, when I retire, I will finish all this. I will publish books and I will uh, sell my scripts, but uh, I don't see myself retiring at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you shouldn't, of course, because we we would be you know. Uh, one more thing, he, the question that she asked, that what would you like to see in Bombay? Yeah, yeah. More bookshops. That's true. Yeah. Round of applause for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think it's essential. We, it, uh, it was an amazing culture that the city, and a uh, big part of our city's culture, uh, you know, bookstores. Book like, uh, I remember when I was in school, there was a bookstore. Uh, on SV Road called Wellington Bookstore. We used to go there, hang out there. But all those spaces are gone. Uh, you know, Lotus uh, Book House, which was at Reclamation. We used to spend hours there. I mean, that's where the first set of Khana Kazala uh, emerged from. The first set of recipes were chosen from there. You know, they sitting there, looking at the books, uh, and they never stopped you from sitting there and reading those books. And it's dying, I mean, you know, we are ordering it online. Reading the synopsis, I find that I find that uh, great progress, but also uh, hindering uh, the joy of yeah. experiencing uh, books. It's true, yeah. so great that you know there is a bookshop and such a big space uh, that is still alive and kicking in the city of Bombay. No, oh, lovely, lovely, uh, lovely words, uh, sir. Thank you so much for these words. And uh, so, Abhishek, to you. Uh, you know, how did you kind of mix, uh, because with how much I've read your book, you know, it's, it's a mix of kind of mythology, myths, legends, uh, with modernity. So, you know, how did you come up with those ideas, like, what, tell me a little bit about the process so that, you know, would love to hear. So, I mean, I was always a fan of mythology, Hindu, Western, I read a lot of Amar Chitrakathas going and growing up, uh, Marvel comics, I watched the Marvel films, you know, I'm a big fantasy fan generally. And uh, I think it started off with what if and why not, like you see all of this happening in New York City. So I was like, why can't it happen in Amchi Mumbai? It's, it's, it started off with that. And um, it's just picking up and just pushing that uh, boundary a little further each time, right? I would, I would uh, think about the fact that what if Satan, who is like the first fallen angel, right? What if he conspired with an Asura to take over the city of Mumbai, starting a revolution against the gods? And uh, in like amidst all this, there is this 26-year-old hyper-anxious copywriter working in an ad agency, a Bombay-bred boy, who's caught in the middle of all this, right? And he's an anxiety also is something that we, I think, a lot of us deal with these days. So amidst everything, a very simpleton like him, he's caught in the middle of this this celestial warfare. It just it's 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 to say that you know all of this is going on so it could happen to anyone like you, me, every like anyone over here. So then what would the outcome be? So it was many many things like this, right? It's almost like um, I mean if it's almost obvious. The most obvious thing is if an Asura were to come from hell to earth, the first thing he or she would do would buy a Mithibai Vada Pav. You know, because it's like, why would, why, why would he not? Like, he doesn't get what up, I was in hell. So I mean, it, it, it's things like this, like, why not? What if? Why not? What if? Um, and I think all these things just somehow came together and it just, it became what it is. Yeah. So one of the good things about writing, uh, fusing uh, modern and mythology, is that, uh, you know, in today's times, when you have to be very careful about making political statements, uh, it's a great way to say it and also make it look like a fantasy. Because it's fast becoming a fantasy. <laughs> but, but, but what's your relationship with the uh, myths as well, sir? Like what's your relationship with myths, legends, you know, like you've grown up uh, reading myths and legends and you know, imagining like your uh, they they uh, are the uh, you know founding uh, you know the foundation of your imagination your ability to uh, look at the world not in uh, such, uh, you know, flesh and bone. You know, they, they transport. So I grew up with that. I mean, Amar Chitra Gata, of course, was, but so much, so much that we read, so much that we traveled, you know, whether it was with Tintin or whether it was with the Mahabharat, 
whether it was with Asterix and Obelix uh, or whether it was Mad Magazine. Uh, you know, you always uh, traveled uh, worlds. You know, I always imagined myself as Tintin. You know, traveling into, into time, into a place, you know, finding things. I mean, Indiana Jones uh, always fascinated me as a character until they made the last cut. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, I think uh, mythology is the basis of all our storytelling and we have such a rich uh, uh, heritage of mythology, such a rich heritage of mythology that uh, uh, I'm glad, uh, you know, writers like Abhishek, you and, you know, newer writers are embracing this form and, you know, giving it a new uh, twist. Otherwise, you know, we, uh, it leads to stagnancy. The, the, uh, the same myths are repeated and we keep hopping. We keep making that past a part of our culture. I think the importance of reinterpreting, reimagining and creating myths I mean, that is what fascinated me uh, to this book, you know, that, uh, you know, how about a gangster uh, story set in Mumbai, a Mumbai gangster story, but it's not Satya, uh, you know, and it's set uh, in uh, a mythical time, you know, the victory of good over evil, which is a story, cockroach and gangster story, but it's set uh, in another time, and I think that is fascinating. Uh, you know, that you take a myth and you sort of connect it to the world uh, yeah. that you are living in. I mean, that's what we do all the time. We are living, we are living in Mahabharat. We are being uh, forced to believe in Ramayana. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we need more myths. <laughs> Any project that you are working on regarding myths? Well, uh, like him, I don't get enough money to make money. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Okay. <laughs> that's the hope. So let's hope that uh, any producers looking out there, uh, please give this, these talented guys some money so that they can, <laughs> they can write great. <laughs> the, the, the mythology I'm working on right now is uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. He's fast becoming mythology for us. <laughs> oh, yes, that's the next. Uh, oh, yeah, he's becoming mythology because people almost believe that it did not exist. <laughs> oh, yeah, so uh, a lot of mythical uh, elements of, in the book, Abhishek, uh, especially angels, right? I mean, uh, so how do they play a significant part in the book? Because, you know, when you, I write a lot of uh, on Hindu myths myself, you know, and I'm a Christian, by the way. So it's something like, uh, how did, uh, I believe you are Hindu, right? Uh, yeah, you're Hindu, I'm just confirming. But yeah, so are you are you writing an angel? So that's very interesting. Like, what was the dynamics? What was what would the angels play a significant part in the book? Um, I think again, coming back to what all I was fascinated by, I am fascinated by your angelology, as as they call it. Uh, so whether it's Western mythology, Hindu mythology, Greek, or all of it alike. So I've 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 taken kind of bits and pieces from all of that. Um, and uh, I think the idea of angels, it's, it's basically that what if the, the concept of fallen angels comes in the Bible, right? Satan, the first of the fallen, has been sent down and then he's kind of banished into hell. And, um, and I thought, why can't that be integrated with these other elements? You've got, um, you've got uh, celestial offspring, celestial parents, which is something that is there also in the Mahabharata, you see the Pandavas. Each one has a celestial parent, right? Um, so that element is there. Asuras and Rakshasas, that element is from Hindu mythology. And angels, of course, is from... So the idea was to bring all of it together. It is... The concept of hell and heaven exists, I think, throughout. Wherever you go, the idea of uh, good versus evil, that is something that exists throughout. So why can't you just take bits and fuse them up together? And more than that, also... It was a great way, it was kind of the inciting incident, a great way to begin the story because the fallen angels, they kind of, uh, they are in cahoots with the Asuras and Rakshasas and they, the gateway of hell opens and they unleash themselves onto Mumbai. So the story begins from there. So it felt like a, a great way to start the book. And uh, what messages or themes you would like the readers to take from this book? That's a deep question. <laughs> 
Um, no, I think one. I think that there be two things to this. One is um, as an artist, I think just just the effort that it takes to create something, write something. It takes a lot of courage to get yourself to that um, thing and look at a blank a blank screen. When the, nowadays you're looking at blank blank screens, right? So to be able to take that first step and actually write that out, um, and then more than that, beyond that, go out there and publish it. So just I think if if people can take away. It, that you just need to do. Just keep doing, and hopefully from there something will. There will be some kind of a snowballing effect, and it will uh, manifest in some way or the other. So that is one from that angle. Besides that, I think uh, from the narrative perspective, I think there's one recurring theme, which is the idea of belief, right? So I think that's something that I would like to. I would like people to take back. Sounds like a generic thing, but uh, it's still so hard to get around uh, when you want. To get something done, just having belief, having all the belief to pull through—that uh, is something I think uh, it would be great. If, so the main, the central character in our, he is this purposeless 26-year-old guy who is meandering through life, and he suddenly realizes that he has a bigger role to play in this world, in this universe. So how does he step up and live up to the responsibilities that destiny has kind of carved out for him? More importantly, I think it goes to say that no one ever is like inconsequential. Everyone has a role to play, whatever that may be. So no one is inconsequential. So that is one thing. And I think for me also, I was coming out of a time when I, I was feeling like, you know what, where is my life heading? And you eventually you do that there is always the light at the end of the darkest of tunnels. So that's that's something. Well, since it's uh, you know there are so many important points that he has made. So you know it's very tough uh, for young artists to get their voice out there. You know, so what would be your advice to the young artist out there? You know, who might be you know this will be covered everywhere. So anything you would like to give inspiration? I think uh, it's just doing uh, you know what Nike says. Just do it. I think that is important. Doing is so important. You know, very often we think. Why? Why am I not a writer? Because I haven't done it. You know, you sit there. It's a lonely job. You sit. You write. You stare at a blank page. You feel sometimes. You know, you revisit what you've written. It's terrible. And then you go back and write. You write. You rewrite. You. You know. And that. I think that sheer uh, discipline is what every artist needs to never give up. To continue doing. Uh, that is important, and of course, it needs. Uh, ultimately, it needs a patron. I mean, as a publishing house, uh, what you are doing, it needs many more such people to bring that work out. You know, uh, every piece of art has an audience, whether it's one person or a million people. I think we have to write it for that one person first, which is yourself. Do it for yourself. You are that. You are the first member. Of the audience, you are the first consumer. You are the first reader. Do it for yourself. A million will follow, but continue doing it. You know, don't give up. If you can read what you've written, then your first audience is already there. And uh, Abhishek, last question, guys, and we will open the floor for Q and A. And if you have any questions, we'll take few of them. To answer, sir, as well as Abhishek. Uh, what are your ambitions with the uh, like? What's the plan? What's the following say? What's the plan? I mean, I'm going to go out on the limb and say that I want to make it well the largest mytho fantasy franchise that India can take to the world. Hopefully, but that's not too ambitious. Right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And movie, uh, Okay, great. Wonderful, guys. Uh, Q&A. So, sir, I believe... Uh, can we have another mic? Uh, I'll just give a mic. Uh, this is a mic call. Yeah, yeah. Ravishan. Ravishan. Filmfestival.com. Abhishek, the question is... Bhut, Jin, Pret, Ghost, Angel, Dayan... I don't think many of us know even the difference between them. And uh, of late, there is a rising fascination for films and books and literature and everything about uh, 
these uh, extra terrestrial things, if you like to call them. What do you think has prompted this? Is it, is it uh, the fact that reality is so harsh that one wants to delve into the unreal or, or the uh, celestial? And the second part is that now that three years have passed since COVID, uh, you, you'll be able to raise 300 crores, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with the latter, the second part. I really hope that comes true soon. <laughs> I hope you uh, you ha you have some connection with the genie or something. Yeah. Genius. Genius. <laughs> Three magical wishes. So my first wish will be 300 crores. <laughs> um, no, I think you kind of uh, hit the nail on the head that it is uh, there is um, reality does get hard, um, and I think we deal with it on a daily basis. And I think as storytellers, also we like to live in the bubble that we do. Um, so there is a sense of wanting to escape from it, going into that. One is that. Secondly, also, I think um, as people grow old, as storytellers also age, they tend to also go back to their roots for inspiration. That's what I feel. Um, because I think when I was young, I read the Amar Chitrakatas, but then there was a huge gap after that. When you're in your teenagers, you're being all rebellious and stuff like that, you're like, I just do what I want to. So you're not really... Uh, I mean, I think you're, you're not looking for any further inspiration, but then when you hit a block in your life, then you start going back to your roots. Like I very recently after that, I mean, years ago, but that's still recent compared to when I wrote the book, read the Mahabharat, read the Ramayana, and tried to, you know, went, read a lot of Devdar Patnayaks and, you know, these kind of things, which I would have never read when I was young, as, as often, except in the form of comics, Amar Um So I think it's both of that, escaping reality, yes, but also going back to our roots, a combination of, I don't know if that makes sense. A small follow-up. Uh, uh, till about 20 years ago, the censor, the Central Board of Film Certification, as it is called, had a clause saying that any film that promotes belief in supernatural, magic cure, fantasy, total uh, celestial fantasy and things like that, not not Shiri Farhad and all that, will be banned. Not allowed. Now you have such a spate of uh, films uh, with this with this subject. So is it something that was bottled up all, all this time and suddenly exploded? You think, or is it some other phenomenon? No, I don't think it's. I don't think it was bottled up. It's just the going back to the previous point. I don't think there's any sense of uh, rebel rebelling to that idea. So I don't know. You is there something you don't want to? Yeah, Hansal Bhai can add. I, I, uh, this uh, this particular clause, I was not aware. Of. Yeah, even I, know. I was not aware of. Uh, it's been, I made my first film 27 years ago, maybe because I haven't made films on these themes. But uh, I was not aware of this. And yeah, I mean, there's been. It's. I think it's come from uh, this. Uh, you know, I think Lord of the Rings, uh, Harry Potter. Uh, you know, that has really given rise to this. Uh, people have realized that there's a business model that exists in it's ultimately a business and uh, I think that has uh, uh, led to this, I think everyone was fascinated, we watched our uh, uh, spectacles and enjoyed them you know, since we were kids but I think now uh, it's gone, come closer home, you know, the, uh, the British, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, all this has taken on popular imagination and all of us feel that there is a franchisable, uh, you know, potential for all these stories. Which is why, you know, the Ramayana is being made uh, uh, with major stars. The Mahabharata is being made. Uh, you know, uh, we are retelling these stories. Uh, and as I said earlier, I am glad to be reinterpreted. And there is a new uh, newness. You know, we are telling the same stories. Thank you, both of you. So, uh, I'll be, yeah, okay, so, uh, yeah, 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 please, please, what's your name, what's your name? My name is Tanya, congratulations okay. Abhishek on this amazing launch. Um, my question is, uh, I think mythology is something that's unique in that it's very personal to all of us, but it's also very universal. All, like I said, read Amartya Kartha, we all heard our grandparents tell us stories of various mythologies, 
And I think because there's so much oral storytelling in India, a lot of it has been passed down and not a lot of it documented and captured, uh, written anywhere, which is what makes it fragile. Did you ever, when you were writing, think about the fragility and the sensitivity of the topic and how it would be interpreted or did you just not go there as, as a storyteller? Oh no, definitely. Like my initial idea was to make gods come to earth, but I'm like, oh, that's a, that's going to be a really dangerous thing to do. <laughs> so let's just do, uh, do, like you know, inspiration, celestial offspring. It's not the gods. God, gods are there. We're not, dis we're not disrespecting the gods, so no one can oppose the film. No, definitely, I thought because I mean, for me also, I come from the world of film, television. My and I all obviously, I, I my ambition is to see it on the big screen. Uh, many people said that even when they read it, it's written. Almost like a screenplay. That was the first uh, remark that I got in the first draft that I sent uh, sent out. They were like, it feels like a screenplay. So I had to there had to be a learning curve around it. How do I make this not a screenplay and more of a novel? Because there are there is no audio visual cues over here. It's just the words that is. So I mean, yes, I did very conscious about that. Hansal ji, there is a very thin line in his script, uh, in his story between reality and fiction. You are on the realistic side. So would you even consider making a film on his? No, no, I, um, I'm fascinated, as I said, I'm fascinated. I would love to uh, explore these themes. Uh, adapt a book if uh, I'm able to, you know. And these are things that, as a, I mean, I, uh, it's one of my, uh, one of the boxes in my journey as a filmmaker that I've yet to take. And I mean, I really want to do that. It's a gift uh, for my children, for my grandchildren. You know, telling these stories that are fantastical, that are transporting them into another world. So yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully uh, one day uh, that uh, that could happen. And I think with the uh, birth of uh, you know uh, streaming and uh, not having to rely purely on uh, theatres to bring in audiences, to be able to tell this in a longer format, I think that has opened up greater possibility, so maybe it's not uh, a fantasy for me also. I just want to say that it has been officially documented that Hansel sir wants to adapt the book. <laughs> Headlines! <laughs> just. So, uh, 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 congratulations on the shake uh, and this book really sounds like a labor of love and imagination. So I have a very fun question adding to what Hansel sir said that it will be made into a movie. So, uh, which is your dream star cast? Like, who did you imagine as a main character? <laughs> I think we don't want to let's, let's play this game and offend everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I cast myself, no, I can't just... <laughs> uh, No, 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 I, I, I don't... Um, I'm, I obviously had faces and I had... So for me, in terms of a process as well, when I write... I need to have faces to it, right? Uh, but they are faces from all across. They are not from here. They are people from my daily life. Uh, that you need to be an integral part of the movie. Huh? You need to be there yeah, for yeah, casting. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> somehow, somehow I have to find my way into it. Uh, but no, I'm not really given that that any thought. I think that really needs to. Yeah, no, I can't be just like as I of the. That, about, uh, that gives us an imagination power. You know, yeah. the readers can imagine. Who do, you, who do you think? I mean, have you have you read the synopsis? I read the synopsis, and you said Satan. So I think the one person that comes in our mind is Ranveer Singh when we talk about a villain who is, you know, you a lovable villain. That's the one that comes in our head. Or maybe from KGF Harshira, yeah, he or yeah, should also be a good option. Just you, Satan is not too lovable, just to kind of first <laughs> about. I think our readers, we are morally grey is our favourite colour. <laughs> just, just to answer your, I'm his dad, he also had my face as one of the <laughs> but, but hopefully it's not the evil character. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, Kiran, you... Uh, yeah, Kiran. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, I was about to ask, but I think uh, the beautiful lady actually asked the question about the mythology thing. But the second question is that uh, creative people in journal uh, gets to a point where they're creatively exhausted, which is also called a creative block, by the way. So, how is it that all three of you, because all three of you are in the creative direction, how, how does you overcome it? Or you don't even think about it. How does that go for you? I think we started creative block. Very important part. I think I have answered that uh, you have to uh, keep, uh, uh, you know, uh, creative people should not 
feel ashamed of procrastinating. You should not be afraid of taking a break. You should not be afraid of being seen as doing nothing. Because you're never doing nothing. You know, and that is the that is the uh, freedom that art is supposed to give you and that is the freedom that art gives you. To be doing nothing but yet doing a lot. And uh, you know, I think, and don't take it too seriously that if I'm free and I'm thinking about my story, you know, I think the, uh, the clues come from the simplest of things, from the car on the streets, from uh, uh, the person that you meet, from the food that you eat, uh, from the sky, from the stars, from everywhere. It just, uh, it will come someday. And so I think to have faith in the process uh, that being blocked is as uh, uh, crucial to the creative process as it is to doing. Uh, I think that that understanding uh, is very important. I've learned the hard way, but now my wife doesn't complain that I'm lazing around. <laughs> Kevin, you are a very well-known author yourself. What made you choose this book? That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. And, and to be honest, that, that comes from, that's why I asked you this question also, which is, uh, when I saw angels and Azura's, uh, you know, fighting each other, and I was like, yeah, yeah, interesting part. I never have I seen this kind of fusion. I think uh, that was what piqued my interest. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, last question, I guess. Uh, last question, and uh, no repeated question. By the way, I think uh, uh, the the man, the man, or the boy, uh, the boy, the man, the man, boy in the back. <laughs> the man. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I believe. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen you on the television as well. I mean, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Viraf. The man Viraf. boy is called Viraf. Yeah. Uh, I have a fun question and a serious question. I'm going to start with the fun question. Is it's amazing we have three fantastic storytelling minds from different walks of life and different mediums. Hansel, sir, Kevin, you yourself in your own right. I have a question for all three of you. And what uh, propels you to tell stories, each one of you? Uh, it's my first question to all three of you. Abhishek, it's your book launch. Maybe you should start. I think to be able to two things. To live out fantasies that I could not in real life. You know, do things that people would otherwise throw me to jail for. <laughs> One is that. Uh, and this may sound a little narcissistic, but to be able to play God, where I create the world, it's my rules. No one can tell me that this is not how it should be. No, I decide how it should be. You know, so it's it's a little bit of a ego kick. I'll, I'll, I'll admit, it's, it's a very much ego kick. Um, yeah, and escaping into fantasies, doing absolutely horrendous, incorrigible things that one would not accept around here, you know. I hope I didn't scare anyone. Uh, what propels me to be a writer, I think I'm not really good at anything else. So, you know, I kind of realized that that's the only thing I'm good at, you know. And I thought, you know, let's just do this only. I tried doing screenplays also, by the way. I tried to enter the, the, the Bollywood industry as well. I <laughs> 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm a happy novelist. So yeah, that's. I I mean I have a very simple reason to tell stories, and that is to overcome my shyness. Uh, I I would rather talk to people, rather socialize through the stories that I tell. Uh, I would rather be known by my stories than by who I am, because I think the reality. Is not as good as my students. Interesting. You have a fun question, right? Fun question. Yeah, fun question. Uh, that was the fun question, not the serious question. Oh, okay. <laughs> my serious question is uh, what role did Palak have in your journey as a writer? This could take a while. <laughs> She, she, she's she's gone running behind. Look at her. Uh, by the way, uh, Palak is my fiance. I am her fiance. We are friends. Um, Mar marriage is in February. Fair. Yeah. So, every, so everyone's invited, by the way. Just, uh, <laughs> so I, I have, now that I know, I've seen uh, her aunt behind. So we were. So she's uh, a niece of my uh, classmate from school. 
right there. And yeah. so I was wondering what you were doing here. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. And I've spoken to Palak, who's a writer in her own uh, in her own right, a very good writer in her own right. So uh, yeah, congratulations to both of you. M more congratulations. <laughs> Uh, no, like Sir said, she—I mean, she is a she's a fantastic writer. She's been doing it for a long time. She's trained and I've read her work. It's just incredible. She, I think, she always keeps me in check. That's one thing. I'm talking about generally in life and <laughs> otherwise also. She's always one keeping me in check and always pushing me. This entire event also putting it together, you know, being that pillar who can, who, who kind of. She's almost like gravity, right? She pulls everything and makes sure Earth kind of is held together. So she's got that force. Uh, she's really a force of nature. So I think overall, that's that's kind of the thing. I could go on and on, but I think let's keep it. Great, great guys. Thank you so much. If you have any other questions from Anzal sir and Abhishek, you can definitely ask once the event is over. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, it's a Sunday well spent. I had a bookshop uh, launching uh, this book and I think uh, just seeing the turnout is encouraging that you know, there are people who still read, uh, which is wonderful, you know, people who read beyond uh, Instagram posts and uh, uh, tweets. So uh, it's wonderful to see everyone turning out and uh, you know, I wish you all the best Abhishek and uh, hopefully uh, this will become a film, but you know, don't stop writing uh, and don't write to make uh, uh, to have adaptations. You know, it's become a new thing. And you know, my what I always tell writers is that you know, everything doesn't need to be adapted. There's a joy in reading. You know, every time somebody talks about adapting Salman Rushdie, uh, I my heart breaks because what is on paper. Uh, is so fantastic and what comes on screen is so limiting so you know let the pen uh, be your uh, best uh, weapon and uh, may you keep writing thank you thank you so much Hansik, sir as we near the end of our event let's express our gratitude to everyone who made today's morning possible Lakshik, if we are eagerly waiting for your words of thanks and reflection for it. I don't know where to start from, but uh, first off, majorly, thank you so much, Ansar sir, for being here. Um, having a respected filmmaker who I admire so much to be here supporting a first time author, I think that really means a lot. It's very, very reassuring. So, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, my parents, my family who've been there with me, they've stood by me, seen it all. The best family I could ask for. New Voice Press, Kevin Mazal, uh, Simon and Schuster, everyone who making this dream come true. Publishing a book is like the toughest thing to get done. Uh, and these guys really made it almost a walk in the park and it, it's really, it's, it, I mean, I think they need to be extending, more people need to be extending this kind of support to authors. Uh, Divyan, for supporting the book and doing everything in his power to make this a success. Thank you so much Divyan, it means a lot. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a really, really long journey and strangely I can say that it's only begun, right? And when, I think, when it does get tough, I'm going to literally remember this moment when all of you turned up on a Sunday morning. Like, well done, a round of applause to you all. I saw my colleagues here and often at lunch we talk about how on Saturday, Sundays we just become couch potatoes. That's, that's all we want to do. We want to do nothing else. So, And I'm sure that's the same for all of you after a tiring week. So thank you so much. Really means a lot. And um, I have to say the best for the last. I kind of spoke about this a little earlier, but I think it's worth revisiting. She's been instrumental in putting this event together and she kind of really made it her own. She's a fantastic writer and I think that's why she really understands the struggles, the journey that a writer makes. Uh, and not to mention her ability to leave a lasting impression, maintain relationships and see a vision come through. All of these elements have really, uh, have really, been, have really played a major role in making this event a grand success. So please, round of applause for my fiancé. I'm once again just really humbled for all of you to be here. I just want to leave you, I think, with one small thing, if I may. Uh, this has been addressed several times, but no harm in bringing it up again. As a, as a budding artist, I think 
of any kind. We we the world tends uh, not to be the kindest place. Not always, but maybe more often than not, getting something started, getting something out there. I think it becomes almost demotivating, discouraging. I'm seeing a lot of artists over here, writers, filmmakers, uh, directors. I mean, it's, it's it's amazing to kind of have this support. But I think we all know yeah. that the struggle is real, right? Um, and I think if everyone like you have this morning can just extend that hand of support and pick up that one book, pick up that one painting, watch that one play. I think if you show that kind of support, uh, that slight sense of reassurance is what will help us come back to the page or come back to the stage or come back to the screen. That goes a long way for all of us. So for the artists, please continue doing this and uh, thank you so much, thank you so much for being here. Have a good day. Thank you. For those of you who want to take whatever I do, could you tell us a little about the rise of the project? Um, I'd like to say that it's a cultural fusion. It's got different elements of mythology coming together. You've got uh, elements from Western mythology, from Hindu mythology. All of this kind of fuses in together angels, asuras, rakshasas, but all set in a modern context in a city like Mumbai. So you literally have, say, an asura and an angel conspiring to take over Mumbai, and you've got this 26 year old copywriter who is caught or embroiled in this entire chaos. Uh, and then what unveils is what happens. So that could happen to any one of us, you know? Like how it happens in New York City, what can't happen in Amchi Mumbai, that's the... How long did it take you to write this um, I wrote the first draft, it took me about six to eight months to get the first draft out, and then I just did my own thing of, I mean, it's called self-publishing, where you just put it out there and you figure out a way. Um, and then I think about a year or so later, uh, Hi Kevin's company, New Voice Press, came on board, they picked up the book and now it's almost, it has a new life, it's uh, seeing a new journey. So I think end to end, it could be about two years maybe, since the time I thought about it and yeah. What made you pick up this book? Uh, what I really liked is how the angels and the azuras kind of came together and there was a fusion of uh, different myths from all over, all over the world. And I think that is what really interested me into it and that is why the reason I picked up and plus I always bet on the author more than the book so I'm a, so I, I, I took a bet on Abhishek he's a very vibrant and a very uh, energetic guy so yeah. Hansel it's, it's so nice to see you here for a realistic filmmaker this is a work of fiction so tell us what excited you about coming here and supporting us. So the work that we do is all born out of fantasy and uh, we look at uh, uh, you know mythology as a way to sort of expand our universe, our mental universe, our imagination and I'm glad that you know this writing is being done by younger writers that they're embracing this form that storytellers like us uh, can uh, you know sort of aspire to make a fantasy which is not necessarily steeped uh, in the past. A fantasy that is steeped into, uh, that merges the past, the future and the present. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's amazing. Abhishek is a talented writer and uh, just to be here to support him uh, in this endeavor, I think uh, it's my honor. Sir, any chance Rise of the Fallen will be made into a OTT show or a film by Ansel Mehta? I, I mean, I, I'm always hopeful that uh, you know, good work finds a larger audience and uh, that uh, this book finds uh, an audience that is visual, particularly myths have great visual uh, uh, potential. So I hope that this gets made and uh, I mean, I've already put my hands up for the rights. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we are able to make this happen. The million dollar question, which role do you envisage yourself playing for you write stories like screenplays? Um, I mean, so when I think for me, when I started writing out this book, I tried to stay as close to home as possible. So you, you start with the experience, lived in experiences, right? So you can write honestly, you can really feed off those instead of writing about a character that you don't really know about. So I think I'll have to say it'll have to be the central character because a lot of the things, the way he leads his life, the way he makes his journey was inspired from the thing that I went through, right? It's just easier when you it comes off, comes across as more honest, I feel. So definitely we can. Being an author is one thing, supporting authors is another. How do you manage both the roles? I don't. 
<laughs> I, I had, it's very hard and uh, but I try my very best to actually uh, be there for all the writers. I know how tough it is to be a writer out there. Uh, I know how uh, lonely the job is and uh, I think if uh, he has, if Abhishek has friends like me and I have friends like Abhishek and Ansel sir as well, I think we all are supporting writers out there and yeah, so I think that's great. That's how it should be. Any last words, Abhishek? Buy the book. <laughs> Please buy the book. <laughs> And uh, and please let me know what you think. I'm really eager to uh, you know that good, bad, ugly, whatever your thoughts. Please, please, please let me know. And of course, like the way Hansel sir showed up and supported. Please go out there, support first-time authors, playwrights, screenwriters, actors. Please just show your support. And whatever you do, little will go a long way for them. Thank you. Thank you so much.